Popeye really liked that. Oh, there goes Olive. Okay. So now the goats have a little playpen. Get up there, Popeye. Olive went right up. It looks like uh, Journey is just going to say, you know what? I'm not going to get up there, but I want to lay right here beside the playpen. Such a sweet girl. Popeye, get your behind up there. Olive is showing out. She went right up. Oh, no. She, oh, no. He didn't try to use her. At, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, baby. I'm laughing with everybody else. We love you so much. And that was the saddest thing that Popeye tried to use you for leverage. Hey, folks. Uh, Lester here. Um, this morning, I'm going to work on a little project. And uh, I'll go ahead and just let you know that I have been heavily criticized. No, can you believe that? Lester has been heavily criticized for the contraption that I set up here in the uh, little nursery in an attempt to keep the piglets and the baby goats and our little rescue over here nice and warm at night. I wanted to have a heat lamp, but I wasn't sure how to have that heat lamp set up in a safe place. I did not feel comfortable using those uh, clamps to the to the edge here because listen we've had a fire here before we've had one of these cause a fire uh last year uh, we have an issue babe i'm pretty sure i know what's happened oh this is bad this is super super bad okay unplug it i need a bucket of some sort ah! because sometimes the clamps can sometimes pop off and those things get hot. So what I decided to do was try to come out this morning and do a little bit of a, a re-innovation. A, a re I'm just going to set it up a little bit differently, okay? So what I'm going to attempt to do is actually take and suspend it from the air. From, from the air. From <laughs> No, I'm going to hang the cord around that beam and let it kind of hang down here. And I'll drop it to about the same height. I'm going to also move it maybe a little bit closer to this corner. And this is the corner that blocks the north wind where uh, most of the animals prefer to get anyway. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to, and then we can get this big old cage out of here. A lot of folks were saying that this cage is going to end up being a problem because the goats and the pigs and especially our little journey could get herself caught up in it somehow. And uh, that could be a problem for her. You know, she didn't get around real well. She has a, a handicap. She was a, had a little birth defect and uh, she has some little back leg issues. So she pretty much kind of hobbles herself around here and there. For the last several days, she has managed to come in and out with, you know, just without a problem because the holes are plenty big. But as she's getting older, the piglets are getting bigger, everyone's growing on us. It is time to make a change. So that's what I'm up, up to this morning. I brought my ladder and uh, I'll get a few zip ties and we will get this thing started. All right, so what I have to do first is go cut off all of the old zip ties that I had to secure this thing into place. Uh, you know, folks, I don't mind being uh, being told a, a better way to do something. And I don't think anyone minds being told of, a, of a, an alternative way of doing something. I just wish that people would learn that there's, a, there's etiquette in suggesting another idea. Instead of degrading the person who is, is at least making an effort, <laughs> seriously, but there is a better way to critique folks. Uh, I guess being a teacher, I learned that, that you just can't get on a kid's behind for not knowing something. Instead, you realize that they need to be taught. And the, fir the fastest way to shut a kid down is to degrade and belittle them. Seriously, the fastest way to shut somebody down is to degrade and belittle them. And that doesn't change as you get older, folks. You know, your boss at work, if all of you guys who work, 
you know how it is when your boss just comes in there on a on a tirade and gets on your ass and screams and hollers and yells. At some point, you tune him out, him or her out, and uh, yeah, and then you lose a lot of respect for that person. But you also, if you're lucky, you've had bosses that can come in and explain things to you, tell you the why, explain to you a, a better way. And so I really appreciate the folks that get on the page and suggest ideas. I really <laughs> can't say a whole lot for the folks who get on there and just call me an imbecile and say I have no place in doing what I'm trying to do and how, <laughs> you know. Anyway, let me go ahead and get started. The piglets are already getting cold. It's a chilly morning. It's in the 40s, and you can already see that I turned this light off, and already they got the little shivers. So let me get off this phone and get to work. All right, so this wasn't that hard of a job, actually. I still moved my cord. I hung it from the uh, beam going up top, and I put it here along the corner. I've tightened it up to where it's facing downward in from the corner, but facing outward. What I'm putting down now is some fresh bedding pull out the old hay and so this is all going to be fresh and dry and it's going to be deep enough because those pigs like to burrow those pigs love to burrow themselves into it yet the uh, lamp is not so close that it can have any thread of catching anything on fire so i still did zip tie the heck out of my clamp light i don't trust the clamps and I said, you know, once we had an issue once before. All right, so this is going to be their new spot. I'll give them a few minutes. Right now, they're all kind of hiding out, not sure what I'm doing. I will uh, get my ladder, and I can move this old uh, cage out of here now. And uh, we'll see how long it takes them to get nice and nestled into their new, to their new bed. All right, so this is what we got for now. Uh, we have our corner for bedding. Uh, with the heat lamp nice and secured against the wall, but not touching the wall. Low enough to where the baby can get plenty of heat. Uh, of course, I still have their water bowl over here because they're slowly starting to sip on more and more water as they get older. And, of course, we always leave stuff out for the pigs to nibble on because they, they are like that. They don't eat a lot at one time, but boy, they eat throughout the entire day. And then... Folks, we have added a playpen for the little goats. Uh, if you don't know, goats, you don't, you already know this. If you watch this page or any animal page, you know that goats love to jump and play. So what we've done was taken a couple of bales of hay and put them here in the corner. I packed them in nice and tight. I used two bales so as they couldn't get jammed away from the corner. And uh, I thought this would be a great place for the goats to be able to jump on and play. As you know, they're at that age where all they want to do is jump on things. If I were to sit down right now, they'd be all over my back. This is the age of goat yoga. You've seen all those videos. And it looks like everyone's pretty curious right now about what's going on with this hay, which is pretty awesome. I believe the goats, I may have to help them along a little bit. Come here, Popeye. <clears throat> I believe they're going to really enjoy this. There you go. Look. I think that maybe Olive will say, you know what, I want to do that. I don't know if she's tall enough to get up there yet or not. <laughs> Olive is showing out. She got up there by herself. You need some more Popeye. Anyway, okay, so this is going to be the new accommodations. Folks, um, I have a little bit of a heavy heart. As you all know, we uh, have made plans from the get-go not to keep all of these unexpected babies. We have reached out to the to the folks who uh, have already asked for babies, and we're letting them know we want to make sure everyone's nice and strong and healthy and doing well before we move anyone along. But uh, we do we oh my goodness we've already found homes for some of our babies. Popeye, get up there! Don't there he goes. All right, that's great. Now they really feel empowered, don't they? They really feel empowered. I got you, baby. I love you. That's awesome. That will give them something to play with. The, the little piglets are going to try to get up there and play. That's not going to work out real well for them yet. 
But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I know we were in our last few days with these babies here. Uh, I, I think I told you all, and I am insistent that no matter what, Pig Newton is staying with me. He's going to become my second Pig Trudy, if I'm lucky. I hope that he'll become as gentle and sweet and as loving as she is. Being a little male, that'll be a little bit different. We'll have him fixed once he's old enough. And uh, But our little females, we have uh, reached out and found where they're going to be going once they're old enough. And so we're really enjoying these days. We are really enjoying these moments. We know we have more baby goats to come. And uh, they will also receive, uh, well, this is going to become our new nursery. This is going to be our new nursery. <laughs> and uh, no, but it's hard, you know, because you, you take them in and you just fall in love with them. You fall in love with them so fast and they become a part of your family, you know, part of your routine. A large part of your day is spent with all the animals, but especially the babies. I mean, folks, this is five times a day we're out here. This is five times a day we're out here doing what we do with these guys and there's no way to come and go. Once you're out here, you're, you're stuck out here for a while. And anyone who has had babies, I mean, even real babies, you know how you can find yourself just sitting beside their crib and just watching them sleep. And as they get older, you watch them in their playpen. You can just sit and watch for hours and hours, and you're so entertained. And you learn so much about them, and you just fall in love with them. It's no different with your babies, your animal babies. You learn how much they need you. You learn, and then they begin to show you love, like she showed me right now. Hey, don't shake your head. No, you do love Daddy, and Daddy loves you too. And then you got your jealousy. Then you got those that are jealous. Guys, leave her alone. She's loving Daddy. Oh, we got some jealous babies here. <laughs> okay. So right now, everyone's also a little bit shocked about how the room has changed. It's, they're coming home. It's like coming home from school and saying, wait a minute, my mom moved the bed around. And then uh, they're like, the cage is gone. Dad moved the cage and he put in a playpen. And so they're having fun just kind of exploring everything right now. All right, I will not keep you. Uh, everything's taken care of. Heat lamp has been moved to a safer location. It's more conducive for the babies. It gives them a nice little nook, a corner to get into to stay nice and warm out of the wind. Um, and any kind of blowing rain. We have a play pin that we set up just using a couple of bells of hay. Uh, it is possible that at some point we will take those out when we get new babies. Uh, we don't want anyone to ever get jammed into the corner behind one of those. These guys are way too big for that. But uh, if we have a newborn that we bring in here at some point, we'll for sure probably pull the play pin out. And, uh, you know, we'll, we accommodate, folks. That's just the best word, to, that's the best way to put it. We accommodate. I learned that word, accommodations, as a teacher because in your classroom of X number of students, you have to accommodate for every single one of their unique needs because all kids are different. Seriously, all kids are different. They have different learning styles. They have, some are advanced, some are a little bit slower you know, as far as learning. And so what you have to do is you accommodate so that everybody, <laughs> you level the playing field. Uh, and this is not level at all because these two up here have ultimate superiority. But they needed that. They needed a place to jump and play. They needed this. This is what goats need. And I'm so happy to offer it to them. But folks, they, you know that this is just the beginning. They ultimately will need something a lot higher. Let me take turn this video off and show you one last place that I've built for my big goats. As we watch this little pig over here scratch his hiney. That was cute. Ah! Ouch. Come on, babies. Up. As your babies get older and bigger. Oh. Oh, be sweet, Ringo. They need more places to play. And so, as you can see... You have to find ways to accommodate them and their special needs or 
Ringo is really giving me a hard time right now, folks. Sorry, I can't make a decent video with Ringo doing all this stuff. Stop it, Ringo. Hold on. Ouch. Ouch. Stop it. Stop the man parts. Ouch. Ugh. As what I was trying to say is, as your babies get older, they need, uh, you know, you have to accommodate their needs as well. And a bell of hay wouldn't do much for them at this point. What they want to do is climb on big rolls of hay. So what I've done here is I've taken all the old hay that was too moldy and mildew and no one had any interest in eating it. And you can see why. Shadows are pretty bad, but you can see why. And I brought it out here and I set it up for play areas. So it's funny because at night, this is where all the babies go. And uh, you can see them climbing around. They play up on here, they wrestle. And uh, they're only on level one right now. This thing has two tiers to it. And so it's all, it's nice and stable. It can't fall anywhere. It's not gonna fall and roll off on top of them for you folks who worry about that. And some folks have easier... Hey! What in the world? What's going on with you guys? And uh, Ringo, stop. And then for anybody who uh, thinks, Lester, why would you put moldy, mildewy hay out in that pasture? Guys, the goats are not going to eat it if it's moldy and mildewish. Mildewy. Is that a word? They're not. So what they do is they play on it. And, uh, and that's fine because what I'll do is this spring and this summer when the insects get really bad, I'll slowly start moving it out of here and I'll be putting it on fire to help create that little bit of that smoke, that smoke barrier to protect our babies. So yeah, it's all about accommodations, folks. It's all about accommodations. <laughs>